Why is this an important aspect of the learning environment you've created? Because based on my research and information that I've obtained from my students during interviews and just in casual conversation, it used to be true, and it still may be in some instances, but in instructional technology it used to be true where you'd go and say, I got my degree here, here's my resume, and people, the employer would look at that and based on relevance of that you may or may not get the job. Now what I'm hearing and what I'm reading is, it's not show me what courses you've had, it's show me what you can do. How do you do it? Let me see an example of how you've done it. Let me see a portfolio of your work. Because the job market is really tight right now and I don't perceive that that's probably going to get any easier. And so they want to be sure that when you're hired or employed that you can actually do what it says there that you can do. So it's actually like you're showing a competency. You're showing that you've met this competency because here is my product. I've actually done it. It's in the traditional model of K K-12 educators, they used to do their, not their practicum, but their student teaching at the end. Mm. So they would do all of their courses and then do their student teaching. Right. So that was redesigned. They do a practicum in the second year. They go one day a week to the school. They actually learn how to implement what they're learning in, in college, in the institution. You don't want to wait until you're all done to actually see if I like teaching online, if I can actually put my content online, if I even know how to transfer the text-based learning of strategies and put it online. I know I've read about learning styles and learning characteristics, but can I take a piece of content and design it and present it to meet those learning styles? So I think learning and doing.